Oh dear. It all goes wrong for Joe Joyce. Now, Joe Joyce just went and lost against a past it, washed up Derek Chisora. Let's have it right. But I also want to put something on the record. And that is that styles make fights. Joe Joyce has slow hands and Joe Joyce, his body mechanics meant that he was always going to find it really awkward to hit a moving low target. If Joe Joyce has an opponent that either doesn't move their head or is tall, he can beat you in a war of attrition. But Derek Chisora is like a small guy who can be awkward to hit who moves his head. And that meant that Joe Joyce found it hard to land what I would call telling punches. On the other hand, Joe Joyce is a guy who doesn't really have fast react. In fact, I wouldn't say hasn't really. He has incredibly slow reaction times. And he's a tall guy that stands up tall. Derek Chisora is a small guy who likes to use the overhand rights and punches upwards. So these two factors put together meant that stylistically, this actually suited Derek Chisora, which is what you saw unfold in this fight. I believe that even a prime Joe Joyce would have struggled. Now, let's have it right. Joe Joyce has lost something. Joe Joyce is not the fighter he used to be. Joe Joyce, since the Zhili Zhang second fight, he's not fighting at the same pace. I would say it is remarkably obvious that Joe Joyce is not throwing as many punches as he used to. I also think that Joe Joyce's punch resistance is decreasing. Now, I don't think he ever had an iron jaw, but I think that now his punch resistance is really on the decline, which is normal with age. So Joe Joyce goes and loses to an over-the-hill Derek Chisora, but because of Joe Joyce's punch mechanics and his inability to land flush, telling punches, clinical punches on Derek Chisora, plus Derek Chisora's style of punching upwards against Joe Joyce, who doesn't move his head, I can see why this happened. I don't think Joe Joyce is shot to pieces or, you know, incredibly shot. I just think that Joe Joyce is on the decline and this was a bad stylistic matchup. I actually think Joe Joyce could be competitive in some other fights. Derek Chisora, I worry that he will attain brain damage if he continues on. Don't get me wrong, he won the fight and he won it clearly. Um, I, I respectfully disagree with Carl Frampton's analysis of the fight. Now, Carl Frampton can say he's world champ, ex-world champion. He's, he's more in the boxing circle than me, absolutely true. But, you know, some, you know, we all have different opinions. I'm entitled to my own. I disagree with Carl Frampton's analysis. I wasn't scoring the fight, but to me, that didn't look close. So for me, I'm not, I thought Joe Joyce would win, but I'm not entirely shocked that he didn't. But let's have it right. Joe Joyce could, in my opinion, be competitive in fights against other heavyweights. But is he going to get those opportunities now? A loss against a past it Derek Chisora is a marketing nightmare. And what I mean by that is opponents, potential opponents are going to look at Joe Joyce as a potentially dangerous fight, but they're not going to want to lose to Joe Joyce when Joe Joyce has lost to Derek Chisora, who's washed up. So they're going to look at it and think, well... Derek Chisora's washed up. Joe Joyce lost to him. We know boxing. Joe Joyce is still actually a little bit dangerous. We're not going to risk fighting him. That's what our teams are going to be thinking. So I think Joe Joyce, it's going to be a long, long road back for him. As for Derek Chisora, I, I think he should retire. But if he wants to go to fight 50, that's all on him. That's all on him. Maybe have some softer opponents and get to 50. We'll see. I don't think Joe Joyce is ever going to reach the upper echelons of the heavyweight division. Not necessarily because he can't, although I think that's probably the case he can't, but also coupled with the fact that from a marketing standpoint, that loss did a lot of damage to his stock. Now, Derek Chisora, I don't think he can compete 
at the highest level. I think he could actually give some fighters a run for their money, but I think that one, he's, his punch resistance isn't what it was. And I think that I just don't think he has enough left. Derek Chisora, I think he should retire, but if he decides to carry on to fight 50, that's on him. That's two more fights to go. Now, as for, I just want to quickly talk about Moses Itauma. He knocked out Marius Wack in two. No one's done it that quick, but let's be real. Marius Wack didn't, one, he's passed it in two. He, for whatever reason, maybe he took the fight for the money and wasn't fit. Maybe he, he just woke up in that, he woke up that day and wasn't motivated. He didn't look like he had the stomach for battle. I've seen Marius Wack get up for fights a lot better than that. Even the Arsen Bet Matmadov defeat. You should see his attitude and body language in that fight against a guy who probably hits harder than Moses Itama, to be fair. So, for whatever reason, Marius Wack wasn't really there on the night. But that's not Moses Itama's fault. So let's give Moses Itama the credit. He went and beat someone who no one's beaten that quick. But let's face it, he fought him at the end of his career. So it's balanced off. Moses Itama, I like what I'm seeing. I want to see him step up. Not too soon, but I do want to see him step up. Anyway, let me know what you think. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you get a notification when I make a new video. If you appreciate my work, I want to leave a donation. There's a link for that in the description. With that, enjoy the rest of your day. See you on the next one.